Hi there, I'm Ms. Emily. I work at the Mooresville Public Library in Mooresville, Indiana, and today I'm here to talk to you about some really great books that go with our summer reading theme. Welcome! We are here today in the first week of summer reading. I'm always excited about summer reading. The theme this year is Imagine Your Story, and so that can be interpreted in lots of different ways. For much of the summer, we'll be talking about lots of imagination, so in the focus being on the Imagine Your Story. But this first week, we're going to kind of flip it, and we're going to imagine your story. So that is our own family histories, and what you can learn about yourself, and what about you can learn about the past uh, from thinking about family history. So the book talks that I have for you today are all about characters who are finding out more about themselves and about their family. So I have lots of different ones to do and we are going to go from picture books all the way up to teen books. So um, in the description you'll see um, some time markers that you can skip ahead if you are looking for just your particular age group. So we're going to start with picture books. So I have four picture books that I really love that I want to share with you. The first one is called Island Born. It's by Juno Diaz and illustrated by Leo Espinoza. And this is about a girl named Lola, and every kid in Lola's school was from somewhere else. Hers was a school of faraway places. So when Lola's teacher asked the students to draw a picture of where their families emigrated from, all the kids are excited, except for Lola. She can't remember the island. She left when she was just a baby. But with the help of her family and friends and their memories, joyous, fantastical, heartbreaking, and sometimes even frightening. Lola's imagination takes her on an extraordinary journey back to the island. As she draws closer to the heart of her family's story, Lola comes to understand the truth of her abuela's words. Just because you don't remember a place doesn't mean it's not in you. This is a beautiful book. There's so much to look at in all of the different pictures. So it's one to take some time with and to really, really examine. Um, it's beautiful. It, it is got a really great message. Highly recommend Island Born. And we will read this in full during our family program video this week, which will be available for one week before we take it down um, for publisher reasons. All right, the second picture book I'd like to share with you today is called This is the Rope. This is a story from the Great Migration by Jacqueline Woodson and illustrated by J James Ransom. So this is the story of one, journey, one family's journey north during the Great Migration and it starts with a little girl in South Carolina who finds a rope under a tree one summer. She has no idea that this rope will become part of her family's history. But for three generations, that rope is passed down, used from everything from a jump rope to tying suitcases onto the car for the big move north to New York City, and even for a family reunion where that first little girl is now a grandmother. During the time of the Great Migration, millions of African American families relocated from the South, seeking better opportunities. With grace and poignancy, Woodson storytelling and Ransom's illustrations of country and city life tell a rich story of a family adapting to change as they hold on to the past and embrace the future. Next is Mama Seton's Whistle. This is by Jerry Spinelli and art by uh, Luen Pham. And it is a really cute story about a woman who has an interesting whistle. So to quote from the book, without even thinking about it, Mama Seton puckered her lips and whistled. It was not a loud whistle or a fancy whistle, just a simple two note whistle. So when she whistles, her children come run home for chocolate cake, hugs, kisses, and shared memories. 
but as time passes, they travel farther and farther away from the familiar sound. Do you think Mama's whistle can be heard all over the world and bring her children home one last time after they're grown? You can find out in Mama Seaton's Whistle. The last book, uh, picture book that I'm going to share with you here is called Drawn Together. This is by Min Lee and illustrated by Dan Santat. A young boy who visits his grandfather and they don't speak the same language. So that lack of a common language leads to some confusion and frustration and silence. But as they sit down and they start drawing together, something magical happens. With the shared love of art and storytelling, the two form a bond that goes way beyond words. And this is another book that has so many amazing illustrations and it's kind of told in a comic book format, but it is a picture book. There's some comic book panels. Um, but it's really, really beautiful and another one to take your time with to, to look at the pictures very closely. Drawn together. We are going to talk about some chapter books. So the first chapter book is actually a leveled reader. This is a Fancy Nancy. Has anybody love Fancy Nancy? This one is called Fancy Nancy, My Family History by Jane O'Connor and pictures are based on the art of Robin Press Glasner. Glasser. So this is a, a, a really cute beginning reader. So uh, for if you're just starting to read, this is kind of a fun one to do. And Nancy, if you know Nancy, she wants to do an interesting school report. She wants to make sure it's interesting on her ancestor. And an ancestor is a fancy name for a family member who lived long ago. But will she remember to stick to the plain truth? Nancy writes a report for school about her great-grandfather making some things up so he seems a little less ordinary. But when she learns that her grandpa will be there to hear her read the report out loud, she realizes maybe she was being a little dishonest. So that is Fancy, An Fancy Nancy, My Family History by Jane O'Connor. Getting into some longer chapter books, this one is checked out right now, so I don't actually have it, but this is The Parker Inheritance by Varian Johnson. And this is a great book for, um, for older elementary and middle school kids. When Candace finds a letter in an old attic in Lambert, South Carolina, she isn't sure she should read it. It's not addressed to her. It's addressed to her grandmother, who left the town in shame. But the letter describes a young woman, an injustice that happened decades ago, a mystery enfolding its writer, and the fortune that awaits the person who solves the puzzle. So, with help of Brandon, the quiet boy across the street, she begins to decipher the clues. The challenge will lead them deep into Lambert's history, full of ugly deeds, forgotten heroes, and one great love, and then deeper into their own families with their own unspoken secrets. Can they find the fortune and fulfill the letter's promise before the answers slip into the past yet again? So this is an awesome book about kind of a family mystery. So if you like mystery stories, this is a great one to read, The Parker Inheritance. You can always place holds on books if they're checked out and eventually they will get to you. The next book I want to highlight is called The Last in a Long Line of Rebels. This is by Lisa Lewis Tyre. This one uh, is about Lou. Lou might only be 12, but she's never been one to take things sitting down. So when her Civil War era house is about to be condemned, she's determined she will save it, either by getting it deemed a historic landmark or by finding the stash of gold rumored to be hidden nearby during the war. As Lou digs into the past, her eyes are open when she finds that her ancestors ran the gamut of slave owners, renegades, thieves, as well as abolitionists. Meanwhile, some incidents in her town show her that many Civil War era prejudices still survive and that the past can keep repeating itself if we let it. Digging into her own past shows Lou that it's never too late to fight injustice 
and she starts to see the real value of understanding and exploring her roots. The next book is also checked out. It's called I Can Make This Promise by Christine Day. This was uh, inspired by Christine Day's own family history. So all her life, Edie has known that her mom was adopted by a white couple. So no matter how curious she might be about her Native American heritage, Edie is sure her family doesn't have any answers. Until the day when she and her friends discover a box hidden in the attic, a box full of letters signed, Love Edith and photos of a woman who looks just like her. Suddenly, Edie has a flurry of new questions about this woman who shares her name. Could she belong to the native family that Edie never knew about? But if her mom and dad have kept this secret from her all her life, how can she trust them to tell her the truth now? I love that so many of these characters are finding secrets and interesting things in their attic. Maybe that's something for you to explore. All right, the last uh, middle grade chapter book that I have for you is Clean Getaway by Nick Stone. This one is about a boy named Scoob. At least that's his nickname. So for the life of him, William Scoob Lamar can't seem to stay out of trouble. And now the run-ins at school have led to lockdown at home. So when his g his grandma, he calls her g Scoop's favorite person on earth asks him to go on an impromptu road trip. He's in the RV faster than he can say freedom. With g old maps and a strange pamphlet called The Traveler's Green Book at their side, the pair takes off on a journey down g memory lane. But adventure quickly turns to uncertainty. Jima keeps changing the license plate, dodging Scoob's questions, and refusing to check Dad's voicemails. And the farther they go, the more Scoob realizes that the world hasn't always been a welcoming place for kids like him, and things aren't always what they seem. Jima included. So if you like graphic novels, I have a couple of those to share with you as well. This first one is from the Amelia Rules um, series, which is uh, uh, one by Jimmy Gownley, and there's several books in the series. This particular one is called When the Past is a Present, and it's all about Amelia's uh, family tree. Amelia Louise McBride is the star. She's been forced to move out of Manhattan after her parents decided to get divorced, and is now living in a small town with her mom and her aunt Tanner. Not to mention the fact that she's dealing with being a new kid in school, trips to the principal's office, first kisses, all kinds of things. But do you know what? She's got her friends, Reggie, Rhonda, and the Pajama Man. He's my favorite. And everything's going to be okay. Except, of course, when it isn't. So in this particular issue of Amelia Rules, she discovers a box of old photos and learns a, two or a thing or two about love, rebellion, and what it means to be a family. So lots of, lots of discovering of old photos and letters. My second graphic novel is called Sunny Side Up. Sunny Lewin has been packed off to Florida to live with her grandfather for the summer. At first, she thought Florida would be fun. It is the world of, uh, the home of Disney World, there are beaches, but the place where Gramps lives is no amusement park. It's full of old people, really old people. Luckily, Sunny isn't the only kid around. She meets Buzz, a boy who is completely obsessed with comic books, and soon they're having adventures of their own, facing off against golf, golf ball eating alligators, runaway cats, and mysteriously disappearing neighbors. But the question remains, why is Sunny down in Florida in the first place? The answer lies in a family secret that won't be secret to Sunny much longer. So we've talked all about uh, fiction titles uh, so far. These are all titles that have been made up, even though a couple of them have been based on uh, the author's own family story. There are elements that are made up. 
I have two nonfiction titles that you might want to check out. So if you're really interested in figuring out your family tree, you might be interested in the science called genealogy. This is the, the exploration of family ties and family trees. So this is the National Geographic Kids Guide to Genealogy. It has tips and tricks on how to uncover your roots and build your family tree. This one's really interactive. There's lots of, um, lots of little sidebars and pictures, fun facts, and they kind of um, take the approach of figuring out your family tree is like being a detective and trying to solve a mystery. And we saw that in some of the other books that we talked about. So uh, this is a really fun book if you're interested in starting to explore your story, your family tree. There is a second book that has similar information. It is the Com Climbing Your Family Tree, Online and Offline Genealogy for Kids. This is the official Ellis Island Handbook. Ellis Island is where a lot of people came to immigrate to the United States, and that's where they um, were processed. So how to find long lost relatives, internet sources throughout, dictionary of American last names, and a website. So there's uh, lots of good information in both of these books on how to find your own ancestors and learn about your family tree. I have two teen books to talk about. So these are for teenagers. The first one is called The Astonishing Color of After by Emily X. R. Pan. Lee Chen Sanders is absolutely certain about one thing. When her mother died, she turned into a bird. Lee, who is half Asian and half white, travels to Taiwan to meet her maternal grandparents for the first time. There, she is determined to find her mother, the bird. In her search, she winds up chasing after ghosts, uncovering family secrets, and forging a new relationship with her grandparents. Alternating between reality and magic, past and present, hope and despair, The Astonishing Color of After is a stunning and heartbreaking novel about finding oneself through family, history, bravery, and love. The the last one that I will tell you about is called Far From the Tree by Robin Benway. This one was a National Book Award winner. It's a really great book. So being a middle child has its ups and downs, but for Grace, who is an only child who was adopted at birth, discovering that she is a middle child is a different ride altogether. After her life is turned upside down, she goes looking for her biological family. This includes Maya, her loud-mouthed younger biological sister, who has a lot to say about their newfound family ties. Having grown up the snarky brunette in a house full of chipper redheads, she's quick to search for traces of herself. And when her adopted family's long-buried problems begin to explode to the surface, Maya can't help but wonder where exactly it is that she belongs. And Joaquin, their stoic older bio brother, who has no interest in bonding over their shared biological mother. After 17 years in the foster care system, he's learned that there are no heroes and secrets and fears are best kept close to the vest where they can't hurt anyone but him. This is a beautiful interweaving story of three very different teenagers who are connected by blood and they explore the meaning of family in all its forms. How to find it, how to keep it, how to love it. Far from the tree. So I hope you've enjoyed this and have gotten some ideas of books to put on hold at the library and explore on your own. If you'd like even more suggestions for books about imagining your story, stories about family history, there's um, a book list for you with quite a few other titles, more than what I've talked about today, um, that you can take a look at. This is either in the pickup packet for the family programs, or you can um, get to it on our website. Um, there is a, a link which uh, talks about all of our summer reading program. You can find out how to register, how to log your minutes for all of these books.
um, or whichever books that you would like to do, how to uh, find our programming, and all of the paper activity sheets and packets that you could print from online, or you can come up to the library and get. Thank you for listening. I hope you have a great summer. Looking forward to exploring more great books with you in the future.